This is Doug Coyle of DJ Coyle Rugby. I'm here with Alicia uh, Washington. She's a member of the U.S. Uh, Women's Eagles 15s team. Now, Alicia, I'd like you to take us through how you got involved in rugby. I know you started in college, yep. progressed to the club level. Now you're with the Eagles getting prepared yes. for uh, Ireland <laughs> in August for mm -hmm. the Women's Rugby World Cup. I'm going to leave it to you. All right, so I got started. Um, I went to uh, college at the University of Connecticut, and I showed up and really wanted to, one, stay fit, and two, make a lot of friends. It's a big university, and I wanted it to feel a little bit smaller and like home. So my friend uh, took me to my first rugby practice, and I fell in love at the first practice. So I had two practices, then my first game, I think two days later, and I was hooked, absolutely. I love the feeling of tackling, um, the camaraderie, and I also love that I was the biggest person on the field for uh, at least my first game. So it was a great feeling to feel so empowered by a sport. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then you then you progress to uh, New York Rugby Club. You're, yes. You're playing for the uh, Women's Career League. Yes. Okay. What brought you there? So um, I knew I had my eyes set on the World Cup this coming up this summer, and. I just try to figure out how I can get there, and so I live in Connecticut. Um, and it's kind of a hike to get to New York, but I just knew that their um, their commitment to the game was so strong. Um, the players are all so internally driven. That practice is amazing. The coaching there is amazing, um, and they had their eyes set on a uh, national championship. And we ended up getting third this year. But I learned so much, just all the little details that I had been ignoring um, as a uh, player progressing. Just they fine-tuned those, and I just felt so much more prepared for everything coming to me from the Eagles from that program this season. You, you did have an undefeated season, though. We did. Uh, we did. the playoffs. Yes. Yes. It was, a good, it was a good showing, I think, in WPL that no team went undefeated. And that showed the competition. So even um, the, player, the teams in first and second were 7-1 and one on the season. And I think that that shows how much competition there was within the WPL uh, bracket this year. And, and how did you come under the, uh, the U.S. Uh, national team radar? I think I am definitely a person that has been, uh, I've benefited from the national team pathway. So um, as uh, an undergrad, I, I went to a few USAU 20 camps and was named to those teams for uh, two years and then um, progressed all-Americans and then went to a few uh, of the Eagle Training Center tryouts and um, probably had maybe five or six tryouts before I got selected so kept progressing through going to whatever I can I could progressing how I could and then um, in was that 2013 I uh, no, 2015 I was uh, selected for the first Super Series in Canada well, I, I certainly wish you luck as you progress. Thank you. And now you're involved in rugby kind of as a business, get, uh, uh, promoting rugby through sports stores. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So I just started working with this new company called uh, Go Play. They're a division of ACIS. And uh, they are a really great company. And they focus on, um, their new focus is uh, sending rugby teams to wherever they want to go. So that could be domestically, internationally, and I think what really attracted me to this company was that um, as a player, I just know how much I benefited from traveling abroad and seeing what rugby is. That you have, really have a family all around the world. Wherever there's a rugby team, you have a family. And so I just wanted to share that passion and give back to rugby in any way I can by helping a startup team with their recruitment, their retention, by planning trips to take them anywhere they want to go in the world. Well, there's, uh, uh, I want to get back to uh, kind of the national team because there's a lot of uh, uh, challenges along the way. There are. Uh, fitness, time. Can you talk about some of the challenges you're face, facing in trying to realize the goal of going to the World Cup? I think the, the biggest challenge uh, that we as players face is our internal drive. Obviously, that everyone on the team is very driven. We want to be there. We want to represent our country very well. But... It's not a full-time job, so we do have to, we do have to have full-time jobs outside of that. So um, I work full-time at a university. Um, I coach. I 
play, I, I, my club team, I ref. So just the time constraints on making sure that I still have time to make sure my fitness is taken care of, my nutrition is always the best it can be, and um, that my skills are staying on point. So a, a 36 hour day would be great, but since we have to work in the confines of 24 hours and getting our sleep in, it's just managing our time really well so that the program advances every day. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. And I wish the U.S. good luck in the World Cup. Thank you, thank you.